I'm Laszlo Zabo, the CEO and co-founder of Kiln. Um, thank you so much for coming uh, this week. We, we are opening the week uh, with one day um, with Chur GC and Etienne, right? One of the, the most famous uh, VC in crypto from homeless to VC. Homeless to Kiln. Uh, to Kiln, yeah, yeah, yeah. We changed the slogan. <laughs> um, and today we, we, we will host panel on restaking just afterwards uh, with the Eigenlayer team. We're very excited to have them um, on roll-ups. Um, on institutional staking on different major custodian in the space. And, and I think last but not least, uh, we'll um, talk about um, smart contracts, security and, and, and staking. Um, yeah, Etienne, do you, do you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, for sure. Uh, thank you for coming, folks. Uh, welcome to Paris again. Uh, my chance to see Laszlo and his team um, once a year. Um, we're part of art, right? If you look at this, you're stunning. Um, in November last year, I was at a private equity event in Amsterdam with 80% um, of the room, gray hair, pension funds, banks, and the organizers wanted to cancel the, uh, the digital asset panel. So we had to convince them to keep it going. And the question became at the panel, um, why are you still in crypto? Why do you still bother with blockchain and whatever? So it gave me a chance to go back to like, okay, what is the whole, what is my why? And uh, it's good to recenter and um, work with founders like Laszlo um, as a fund um, globally investing, working with founders that keep executing, keep building this vision of um, decentralized finance, peer-to-peer -peer transactions, peer-to-peer -peer trading. Um, we're excited about it and we'll keep supporting the, I would say, almost a cost not to sound too dreamy. Um, so yeah, welcome again, appreciate it. Um, so last one to kick it off. Great title, the state of institutional eat staking after Chapella. For those that are not that technically inclined on the whole concept, could you just briefly touch upon two things, like a quick, super quick, for dummies even, what is staking, what is Chapella? Yeah, of course. <clears throat> we, we can also open it to, yeah. other, to other questions and um, we'll, we'll try to make this, this panel as short as possible to, yeah. again, focus on the, on the other panels. Yeah, um, for sure. So yeah, Chapella is the um, upgrade on the Ethereum protocol that makes uh, now anyone um, able to unstake their assets. So since uh, the big chain launch in December 2020, you were locked a bit more than two years um, and you couldn't unstake your assets. And uh, yeah, since Chapella, we've seen a lot of obviously, you know, pe some, some people in, uh, and some companies in staking, but um, it, because it de-risk um, all the investors of using staking, liquid staking, um, you know, Kiln products uh, or, um, you know, liquid staking for institutions or Lido, uh, the Lido friends uh, on my left here. Um, yeah, we, we Chapella is basically de-risk um, a lot of um, the process of staking ETH, uh, and now now you are uh, you are liquid to the extent of there is um, there is an uh, exit queue, yeah. right? Um, so I think it's seven seven eight days uh, okay. now, uh, but but yes, you, you are liquid um, in that sense. Okay, so in a more general sense, um, if you would look back like past, present, future on staking. Whole Ethereum ecosystem. We have folks from Eigenlayer here today, uh, Babylon, um, coming out from different angles. Um, what are your view on that? If you look at yesterday, where we are today, what's coming, um, and maybe even touch upon what excites you in that space. Yeah, of course. Um, first of all, staking was um, a retail product, right? You would uh, invest in ICOs, delegate to um, to validate on Solana, other other coins. And it became, uh, I think, in becoming more and more um, <clears throat> an institutional product or a platform product. So you, you, you now stake from uh, the Ledger Live or you now stake uh, from Coinbase or from you know, any other exchanges, wallets, uh, custodians, platform in the space. Um, I think it will Apple, I think liquid staking, the liquid staking market uh, and the, the liquid staking usage uh, We'll, we'll see a, a similar movement, so from retail to uh, a platform, crypto platform product, um, and you will be able to uh, use liquid staking product and stake on liquid staking protocol uh, from platform, uh, you know, in an easier and easier way. 
And last but not least, yes, I think it will happen uh, the, the same to DeFi, right? Um, then if you're asking me like what is, is exciting in, in the staking space right now, we're going to hear about eigenlayer, restaking, this concept of shared security. And obviously, you know, it, it brings some issues, but um, this concept of you reusing the security of the, um, the, the Ethereum protocol to throw it to, um, to L2s or to other networks, that's very, very interesting. It, it also brings... Um, um, an additional source of rewards to users. Um, so that's a great opportunity. Uh, you know, you were earning five to six percent. Maybe you're going to be earning ten to twelve percent. Of course, according to different uh, risk profile, you have to know that. But uh, that's a huge opportunity for the end user. Okay. Um, on that note, you mentioned uh, risk. Um, you talk to a lot of institutions, whether in and out of crypto, um, the industry. Um, how do you sleep, right? From a, if you think of security, um, there's a hack on Twitter almost daily. Um, I wake up and I'm like, not today, please, not today. Um, how do you sleep? How do you mitigate that effect? I know you guys have security as a first principle. Um, so if you could touch upon that for a minute. Yeah, I mean, um, that how do I sleep? And actually, it's like you know, it's, you can ask the same to uh, uh, Easy, right? Isodoros. Uh, uh, how do, how do people at Lido sleep? So, the, I guess there's. I mean, first of all, um, in I, shifts. sorry. Sorry. In shifts. In shift. In shift. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We yeah. We 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 do meditate a little bit to sleep. Okay. Um, we don't take pills, but um, no. How do we sleep? The, in in staking. Op Operational staking, you have this, um, you know, um, validation key security problem. Um, so being SOC 2 type 2 um, or making sure you have the best security setup and you secure your key, uh, uh, your keys as, as best as possible is, is key, uh, is, is essential. And, and obviously, you know, when you start to offer staking experience through smart contract, then you, you have, um, you know, this smart, smart contract security issue uh, that you need to focus on. And, we see security as the most important and also the biggest risk for the company or uh, right now and, and all our products we offer to our customers. You need to do regular audits. Um, you now, uh, you know, kind of ongoing monitoring on smart contracts uh, is, is also essential. Um, so not only, you know, the, the um, Stamp stamp of you being monitored, like uh, you be audited, but, but but you know the, on like continuous uh, monitoring on, on on smart contracts, seeing if even attacker is not trying to uh, to um, to to steal our, our funds or, or to find a, a breach there, and yeah, and doing just like audits regularly, right? Um, it's not because you've done an audit with Certic that um, that you're good to go. Um, you need to do a, you know audits um, every month, every two months, uh, every three months. That's uh, that's an ongoing thing. And you know we have some of our smart contract uh, developers, uh, you know, in in the room. Um, you know, there's Gautier, there's there's uh, Maxime just in front of me. And yeah, because because of them, and I know uh, you know they're amazing people. Um, I can sleep at night. Okay, jealous. Um, okay, that's good. Um, just to shift gear for a bit. Um, as a founder in such a fast-moving industry, um, I mean, we were out for dinner last night and someone mentioned FTX was two years ago, right? <laughs> um, it's that fast, you, you try to keep up. Um, looking back, founder Killen, I remember our first conversation in 21. Um, looking back as a founder with um, a product focused on institutions in the industry, is there anything you would share to founders in the audience? Um, some things you would, you would have done different or um, advice, any, anything you would share on your journey from the first inception of Killin to where you are today? Yeah, I mean, I'm in the space um, since 2017, 18. Um, and I, I wished I understood staking earlier, <laughs> right? Okay. Uh, I've seen I've seen Cosmos uh, in staking in 2018, and I, I I think I really understood it in 2020. Yeah. So my advice, uh, if you know I can can give tips or advice, uh, is really you know try to be as as curious as possible. Try to talk to people. Try to to remain open to innovation because of like we are in the fastest growing or fastest innovating industry um, in tech. Uh, so maybe in history. Um, and it changes and there's new topics uh, every six, eight, 10, 12 months. So try to, to have a long-term vision still, 
uh, because you know moving also from one, one topic to the other every six months is not the right strategy. But um, you should keep um, open to it, to what's what's happening in the space, innovation, to make sure you not miss uh, miss one. Yeah, for sure. Okay, so you don't provide staking for AI bots yet. Uh, <laughs> no AI for you guys. Uh, yeah, if you have other buzzwords. <laughs> exactly yeah. right. Uh, so anyway, um, is there anything you would like to? Anyone in the audience would like to ask Laszlo? Um, below. Um, what about insurances that backs your products? Evertas. You mean Evertas? <laughs> 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 Yeah, we're talking to you guys, and, and obviously uh, Evertas uh, seems to be an amazing company and uh, offering an amazing uh, insurance product on, on staking, right? Um, yeah, so we work uh, with Chainproof. Um, so that's uh, kind of like uh, an insurer backed by Munichray that you know. Um, this is, let's, let's say, centralized insurance. Um, we offer, we could offer uh, Nexus Mutual uh, to our clients, so this is more uh, decentralized um, way of, of you know in, ensuring the, um, uh, the the end user through a smart contract and, and a community that is that is uh, pooling or that is that is investing or, or financing the, the insurance products, um, but that's that's a ma major topic. Uh, this being said, um, insurance is is you know it's it's a lot of the marketing. Uh, for in institutions, um, it doesn't cover all the risk, uh, but it will definitely, you know, a good, good insurance product will definitely bring uh, more users into the space uh, and more user, you know, using staking, liquid staking, um, DeFi uh, products in the future. Beautiful. Anyone else? Justin? What's the most exciting thing in your eyes in the staking world right now? Yeah, I think um, I think um, the the movement of liquid staking from retail to platform, uh, restaking, uh, eigenlayer. I'm like you know so excited to see how, how this is gonna turn out and and how it's it's gonna evolve. Um, and yeah, I mean um, I think and also like seeing. Um, I, w I would like to see more of the the real world rates matched with uh, staking. Again, I consider staking as the risk-free rate in crypto. I think uh, we'll see money market fund, US Treasury bond, Europe, European Treasury bonds on-chain tokenized, and seeing like this combination of two uh, rates, uh, rewards uh, mechanism, I think that's pretty exciting. Um, yeah. Do you see anything from a regulatory and tax perspective that's going to affect how staking works? Because I've seen a lot of yeah, that's a, that's a big topic. And first of all, like, it's good to mention that there's no um, staking liquid or DeFi license uh, in the world right now, uh, so it's still very much a gray zone. Um, what some people say, like um, uh, C token will be a taxable event, A token won't be. Like you know, maybe the two of them. It's hard to say, and obviously um, it will highly depend on which which jurisdiction, right? For example, like. Um, in France, you're being taxed on um, your when you you move fiat to crypto, crypto to fiat, right? Um, in the U.S., it's or in, you know in the U.K. as well, it's it's basically per per transactions. Um, so I don't know; it's hard to say uh, if staking will be um, you know taxed more than liquid staking. Um, if what kind of liquid staking will be taxed and, and the other one uh, the other one not? Um, that's hard, really hard to say right now. I can speak for the Netherlands, for instance, where I'm based. Is um, spoke with one tax advisor, and he was like, "It's income." Spoke with another one, just get a second opinion, and he was like, uh, "It's a dividend. It's a yield. Uh, if you don't claim it, whatever." Had a whole thing, and they both had. They asked the question to the IRS, basically the Dutch IRS, and uh, got an answer, and it was completely the opposite almost. So there's still some sort of, uh, if you will uncertainty there, like uh, no clarity. And um, as long as there's no clarity, we play along. <laughs> right? Uh, <laughs> we play along. Uh, let's go. Uh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> what do you think is the strategy to move on after all these crashes? Not for developers or people that are, that are heavy users from the crypto space, but general people 
I just heard about all, all of these crashes and all this, this frost that we had. How do you think that is the strategy to move on in, in terms of marketing? And, because a lot of people that never touch on crypto, just touching in the last year and lost a lot of funds in Celsius and a lot of uh, bad things. So how do you think this is the strategy to move on right now and try to uh, win again the, the confidence? I mean, um, you know, we, for example, Bilal, right, well, was one, one of the founders that started in France with me, same, same, um, same period. We came into the, the space 2017, 18. 17 was the, <clears throat> the bull market, 18, 19 was so hard for a crypto company to be founded um, and to build a product, um, which is, I think, very different from this bear market, right, where you have a lot of um, crypto VCs that have, um, you know, a lot, of, a lot of money still and that are still investing in, into projects. Uh, you still have a market. Um, it's, it's obviously, uh, you know, the market is, is less booming than, than a year ago to, or like a year and a half or two years ago. Uh, but still, you know, there, there, is, there, there are many more users than we had in uh, the previous bear market. So, you know, I, and personally, I haven't seen um, as much as, as many as, like, team building interesting product that right now. Um, you know, uh, eigenlayer restaking, account, account abstraction, real world rates, uh, um, roll ups, uh, all these topics, uh, they're still ongoing and, and, and the teams are still being, and I think, I think that's, um, that's great that, um, I, th I think this bear market is much more sane even than maybe the next bull, because I can tell you that in a bull market, you, you're, you're not finding product market fits. Uh, it's just a bull market, right? Um, so it, it's the best way right now to find like real users um, that really understand your product, that takes time to give you feedback and, and, and then it will, it will be a roller coaster um, again. Um, and so this being said, coming back to your question, um, yeah, I would say like, just tr try to, to keep building, um, get a few very interested users, get funded uh, from the money you can find in the market, um, and then be prepared for the roller coaster because you know, when, when, when it's coming back, um, you better have a, a product that is uh, ready to be used. Um, if I might touch upon that, um, I think after 22, we all lost, meaning to your point, with regards to uh, trust of anyone participating or even thinking about participating, coming into this industry. Uh, we all lost, whether or not you're, you lost a dollar or ten dollars. Um, so I think that's definitely a part we need to work on. Um, still, um, hence why there was a DeFi Security Summit uh, two days ago. Uh, attended, I'm happy to see the size of research that be, that's being done in that space. Um, no VCs in the room, uh, just guys looking at on code level. You mean only you? Um, I was the only one, I think. Um, looking at code level, how to make this space more secure without relying on like trusting guys like Alex from Celsius. Because uh, you think about it, there's a contradiction there, right? Like. Um, the industry is supposed to be trustless, yet we trust Celsius with our assets or FTX with your assets, right? So that's already a friction that, from an educational standpoint, we need to go back to that. Hence why I think, of course, DeFi platforms did 2x, 3x in their volume and user base, which again proved why we bother with that in the first place, right? So I think definitely there, the research is picking up. Um, so I guess we need that trauma to refocus of why we're doing this. And I'm confident that um, after each blow, um, we keep building and keep growing and it, it's getting better. Because remember, we came from Mt. Gox, right? We came from Mt. Gox. And I'm telling folks this every time, uh, FTX is not the first bomb in crypto. We had many before that, right? Um, even finance didn't, didn't stop after Lehman Brothers, right? So you keep going, you keep building and things will get better. Um, I can, st I, I still remember the first time I used a credit card online, like, holy shit, like, what am I doing, right? But you, you still try it. I got scammed once or twice, right, um, on a website, but you keep going, right? And of course, insurance uh, is one part of it, um, gives you that sense of safety, but uh, we keep going. And um, 
in human history, progress is a given, change is a given. And um, you support anyone that is um, pushing that needle. All right? Um, we're, gonna, we're gonna shut down this part. Um, thanks, everyone. Um, so what do we do? We have many great speakers coming. Um, who yeah. do we have next? The next is um, restaking, actually, and, restaking. and eigenlayer, so a big topic. Big topic. Give us uh, one or two minutes to prepare, and uh, we'll be right back. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah.